Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video we are exploring Taunton city centre for a visit to the Museum of Somerset. Set within the 12th century castle walls of Taunton Castle, you can explore for free the county's captivating story that dates from prehistoric times right up until the present day, with over 400 million years of history, all in one building. So join us whilst we walk around the Museum of Somerset. On your visit, you'll make your way past the museum's tourist information and shop. It's here that you can pick up a leaflet for your guide, see what exhibitions are on and meet the friendly team. Our first stop is the ground floor and original Great Hall of the castle. The ground floor recalls the story of Somerset from its earliest date, 400 million years ago to now. The incredible art installation that you're able to see is this tree sculpture, created by Simon O'Rourke of Wrexham, and the installation is made from a Somerset oak tree. It was around 175 years old, and was otherwise destined to be made into beams. As you look around it, you'll notice the carvings on the tree. These reflect some of the objects and stories that you'll find here at the museum. In this room, it seems that Somerset's beautiful countryside and magnificent coastline were not always as they are now. The gallery traces the story of Somerset's geological past from its foundation over 400 million years ago. The history of fossil discovery in Somerset is so varied and rich. The region's geological formations, ranging from the Jurassic to the Triassic periods, have attracted geologists and fossil hunters. Somerset's records provides people with the crucial evidence of the prehistoric environments and the diverse life forms that existed all those millions of years ago. Over the centuries, numerous and significant finds have been made, contributing to our understanding of Earth's history and the evolution of life. The rocks and fossils, like the ones that you see in front of us, would normally thrive in warm, shallow, clear seas. All around this museum, you'll see the displays which are full of such interesting rocks, formations and fossils with its facts. Interestingly, the fossil of the skeleton that you can see under the glass on the floor is the first complete plesiosaur skeleton to be found in Britain for more than a century. It was amazingly discovered by a Somerset fisherman in 2003. More of the displays showcase the various ammonites and fish like sea dragons, again that would thrive in those warm tropical seas. From sea to land, many years later, the climate would change and so would the animals and plants that would occupy it. Throughout this museum, I think you'll be pleasantly engaged with the mountains of artefacts, relics and bones that they have here. It's a really interesting and interactive way to show off the many years of archaeological and geological history. Towards the back of the room and from the foundations of the Stones exhibition, we come across one of the most famous objects still surviving from Roman Britain. Here in front of us is what's known as the Low Ham Mosaic. This magnificent floor mosaic is one of the finest Roman artefacts left in Britain. The mosaic depicts the tragic love story of Dido and Aeneas, as recorded by the poet Virgil around 25 BC. 
It was discovered in the bath complex of a Roman villa at Low Ham near Langport, where it formed part of an entry to a cold plunge pool. The mosaic is amazingly made of over 120,000 individual coloured tiles that are made from locally sourced limestone and clay. It was created around AD 350 and it is really something to marvel at. From the ground floor you can make your way up the stairs or you can use the accessible lift. That will take you up to the next floor in the museum towards the exhibition named Making Somerset. In this room you'll be able to experience and look at the various discoveries that have been found in the area. Just like the Cheddar brooch, which was discovered whilst metal detecting at Cheddar in October of 2020. It's the only one of its kind known from the southwest making the brooch quite the gem. In AD 410, the Romans would leave Britain, and for the next 300 odd years, very little is known about Somerset, but gradually over time, Anglo-Saxon newcomers would take control of the area. And by AD 845, they had created a shire called Somerset, which was part of the Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Wessex. It's remarkable to see the collections that they hold here, including the crossheads from various Somerset churchyards, and in particular this crosshead from Glastonbury Tor. The tor was a landmark way before the famous tower that now stands upon the site and overlooks the town of Glastonbury. The limestone crosshead that we can see may have formed the top of a freestanding cross or it could have been part of a grave marker. It's interesting to see the beautiful architectural quality that Somerset churches would have possessed. Here there are some fine examples of the furnishings and masonry that would have been created to fill the church walls and give their own personality. As you can notice, the room is full to the brim with objects to gaze at, relics that have been carefully looked after, and what we're enjoying the most is the fact that the museum uses sounds and images and videos, complete with plenty of information to keep you engaged. Just in front of us is a wonderfully carved limestone panel that once stood behind the high altar at St John's Church in Wellington. It's thought to have been carved around the 1500s, but the carvings were defaced during the Reformation, and the re redos were taken down and used as a paving slab at the altar base. It's so intricately made with its richly carved figures, and this, I think, was a standout on our visit. From this room we explored the exhibit named Discovering the World. Inside this particular room, which was originally built in the 1240s as a chapel of the bishops of Winchester, it now houses the objects which belong to Somerset Man and British explorer John Hanning Speak. He was the man who discovered the source of the world's longest river, the River Nile. He had an exciting and eventful military career and had claim as the first European to reach Lake Victoria in East Africa. This room shares some of the fascinating objects of his incredible expedition and journey, including a large haul of shells from his missions to Africa, his blisset rifle, his forks and spoons that he would use whilst travelling, and a gold medal that was given to him from the French Geographical Society to honour his discovery of the Nile. Amongst those treasures we spot what's known as the Taunton Cabinet. It really is an elegant piece, the wonderful painted pattern down its front and at the very top of the cabinet is a figure of peace with her hand resting upon a globe. 
Then at the bottom of the cabinet legs, they are decorated with male figures, each of which represent a different age of man. This wonderful cabinet is a great fit for this expedition room, which is also across from the cabinet full of animal skulls. They are quite freaky, but it's really fascinating to see. Following from Discovering the World, we move into the room titled Rebellion. Famously in Somerset history, the year 1685 is very important. James the Duke of Monmouth attempted to take the throne of England. Thousands of loyal local people would support him, and inside this room we can discover some of the tragic stories that would take place in the same space where some of them were imprisoned before trial. The castle was the scene of the historical drama in the aftermath of the Monmouth's Rebellion of 1685 when the famous Judge Jeffreys' Bloody Azizis was held in this great hall here. The prisoners would await trial to be kept in this room, which was once the 13th century Undercroft. This room was truly captivating, created to help us understand the terror and the harsh lives of those in the 1600s, and especially those poor souls who were the brunt of brutal punishments. The final room for us to explore in the museum was a pop-up exhibition of Doctor Who. Throughout the summer of 2024, the Museum of Somerset took its visitors on a journey through time, with its adventures in time and space, 60 years of Doctor Who art. The exhibition is the largest collection of original and digital Doctor Who art to ever be shown in just one location. I was quite amazed at the wall of comics and all of the memorabilia. It's great for those with an interest into the series. Inside the exhibit you'll see pictures of all of your favourite Doctors, from William Hartnell to Tom Baker, David Tennant, Jodie Whittaker and the new 15th Doctor, Shuti Gatwa. But it wouldn't be Doctor Who without the Doctor's most famous villains, with a large collection of art displays of the Daleks, Cybermen and the host of aliens and strange creatures. This is a fantastic exhibit, which changes throughout the year. At the time of this video going out, I'm afraid to say that the event is now finished. But I'm sure with the success of this one, the museum will be sure to do more in the future, featuring series like Doctor Who. As we begin to wrap up the video on the museum, we had to peek into the outer buildings in the castle courtyard. There is a complete medieval timber frame building, which was named St James's Street Almshouse, made as a home for a poor elderly person around the year 1300. You can see inside what the conditions would have been like, and it really shows us what life would have been like for the inhabitants of the almshouse during the Middle Ages. So that's it for this week, and we really hope that you've enjoyed our explore around the Museum of Somerset. 
We'd like to add that we didn't manage to film every part of the visit, so that leaves some room for you to hopefully go and explore for yourselves, as we think this is a great and free experience around Taunton if you're stuck for places to explore. So please hit that like button, click on the notification bell and subscribe button to never miss another video. And we want to say a big thank you to our Patreons and channel members for being a part of the PIM family. If you'd like to support us further, then have a look down below in our description box or hit that join button. So we'll see you on the next one. Till next time.